What's good, y'all? Kyle Loftus here. Today, we're doing a cinematography breakdown of my latest music video called Love Sick by Shawnee. Now, before we dive in, let's check out some of the music vid. All right, now that you guys have checked out a little bit from the music video, I'd highly recommend watching the whole thing. It's only about two minutes and 30 seconds, so head over, check it out on my page, or you can head over to Shawnee's and check it as well. Now, before we dive into the details, a quick summary. The song is called Love Sick. It's obviously about going through heartbreak and just kind of dealing with this relationship and individual that really torments you and kind of tears it, tears at your heart, but you love them at the same time, um, but also you kind of screwed things up. You know, it's it's that, that typical tough relationship shit. Shit. Going into this music video, you know, me and Shawnee had had a couple strategy calls and sessions just discussing the concept of the video and how we wanted to portray this. And for Shawnee, you know, he wanted it to feel like a jumbled set of thoughts. It wanted, he wanted it to feel random and lost um, to reflect that feeling of when you are feeling lovesick. You know, you're going through this heartache and this torment. It's hard to keep your, th your thoughts straight and linear and, and connected and to make sense. And so we wanted to do that and achieve that with this video. So by that means we knew that we kind of needed to eliminate the idea of a storyline and make this more about how can we visually showcase what one is going through, how one feels. So a lot of this video was about doing things a little different, trying some unique techniques, implementing video effects, and really, really utilizing color and lighting for this. So we wanted to use a lot of moody, dark lighting and a lot of moody love colors, right? So um, purples, deep magentas, um, a bit of fuchsia, teal, um, some red, just all, dark, moody, but romantic uh, colors as well. So the first thing we did was we got together at the studio uh, to get some studio looks in there. Um, excuse me while I'm referencing my phone, I uh, just wanna make sure I get the lighting setups correct and, and I'm just gonna do this in order for, for my brain here because I can be dumb at times. The first setup we did, we kind of wanted to get uh, Shawnee warmed up and get good, getting this feeling. It's the first time we'd worked together. So to loosen him up, um, we just played the track and we just wanted to have a couple performance takes with, with Shawnee just having fun in the studio. So what we did is we used my two LED panels. They are GVM um, LED panels. Um, so we set those towards the psych walls. And so we had one on a blue hue and one on a magenta or, or purple. And we had those shining on the walls, so we've got this nice blue and purple um, spill on the back wall, kind of giving us different color and, and a nice um, mood for, for the song, rather than him just you know performing in front of a blank white sight wall, like that's just boring as hell. Um, additionally, what we used is we used my Nainlight Forza 200, which I'm using right now, and we had that um, set up with a parabolic softbox, and then we set it to paparazzi mode. So we have this constant flashing effect, um, again, just to kind of match the high energy and the sporadicness of, of one's, well, the high energy of the music and the song and the sporadicness of, again, one going through that, that tough cycle with being, well, lovesick and heartbroken. Um, and then additionally, we also use the uh, Nainlight Forza 60B. Um, I threw a Fresnel on there and, and I had my, uh, my, my good buddy Herb um, actually just kind of rotate that and go feel off the song. So to create some nice dynamic lighting, this kind of spotlight effect on him. I thought that was really, really cool. Additionally, we built off of this and we did a side profile look. So literally just turned him to the side and did a side profile look. Additionally, we did a couple takes where the camera was on tripod um, and we used Synpax split diopters. 
Now, if you haven't seen already, I've got an incredible review video on these. I highly recommend you check it out or just go buy them. They're freaking awesome. Um, but we use this to, to create some really, really cool looks. Um, you're seeing a couple of them in the music video here. Um, it's just instances, moments where, uh, again, it, it's cluttered up. It, it's, you know, causing, um, hell, I'll just show you guys. So we have this going in front of the, the, the screen, right? And it's just causing weird refractions and reflections from the light and just impacting the way the lens takes in the image. Um, so we use that to again, enhance that hallucinogenic effect and feeling of, of just being um, lost in, in these just sporadic set of, of thoughts and not knowing how to think or how to feel. Um, and so those were kind of the first kind of set of looks we did. Additionally, we did do um, some green screen looks. Didn't really end up using uh, much of it here in the video, but we did shoot some stuff with him in front of the green screen. There were some things where he wanted specific shots and looks for specific points in the song. One was, I got a devil on my shoulder. Said I'm getting colder. So the devil would say, said I'm getting colder. But he'd point and say, I got a devil on my shoulder. So we filmed that in front of a green screen. So we had an option of him pointing and having the devil version of himself appear on his shoulder. And we also filmed one of him in front of a, a like sitting on a throne chair. And so we'd put an actual animated devil on his shoulder. So those were kind of the options there. Um, lighting setup. Uh, you know, we, we did the Forza 200, but we threw off the grid, so less shaped and controlled light, get more spill, more general light, because with green screen, we need to make sure everything is well lit, evenly lit and clean, no shadows or anything like that, or you're gonna screw yourself. So we did that for our key light on him. Um, we did 60B for a bounce, just to give us uh, some general extra um, ambient light. And then we also did the two GMV LED panels, pointed those um, a little, just had them sitting right behind him. Um, so they're not hitting him, but instead they're hitting the wall, um, or excuse me, the, the seamless tear sheet. So really making sure we're lighting up that green wall extremely well. This third look that we did was um, with the mirror and the wallpaper. And again, I wanted to do something that was different and just felt unique. And so what I did is I used a 70 to 200. So I was manually zooming from 70 to 200 and from 200 to 70 with my Tamron 70 to 200 F 2.8. Again, we used the GMV LEDs. So we had one behind him, one in front, one on red, the other on blue. Um, and then we used the Forza 200 for a bit of key, um, just to make sure he was well lit up. And that was it guys, we, we pretty much just left that set up right where it was with the green screen. We just kind of flipped the lights and moved them around a little bit, um, just based on the where the position of the seamless tear sheet and green screen and lights were. And so after the studio, we headed over to Shawnee's place to get our next set of looks. We had two looks planned at his house. Um, and based on the location scout, there was one look I was dead set on, we had to get and that was utilizing his window. So he had some beautiful windows up in the top of his place, um, small like studio apartment, um, but also kind of like a, a house or what's called like a bungalow, I guess, something like that. Anyways, he had these beautiful uh, windows up in the top, one on each side. So depending upon when the sun was hitting in the day, you know, we were gonna use the one in the back or the one in the front. Um, we used the one in the front because that's where the sun was coming from. So we had nice motivating light coming through. However, we had a bunch of clouds. It was, it was a relatively cloudy day. And so um, we didn't want to sit and just have to solely rely on the sun alone. So what we did is uh, we got a ladder and I got up on top of the roof. Um, maybe not the safest thing. Probably could have used a safety harness or whatever, but you know, got to risk it, get the biscuit. So I got up on the roof and set up a C-stand. We used a bunch of sandbags and I threw on top of that the Forza 300 um, with a Bowen mount so we could blast some light through there. Um, dim was set to 100, daylight balance. Um, and so we used that as well as the sunlight to bleed through and help create that light ray. So now we had the lighting covered in this space. Now, in order to bring that light out, what we need is we need particles in the air. We need something to showcase the density and atmosphere so that light streak can be brought out. So we closed the door and we pumped in a ton of haze and there you go, you got a beautiful light ray. Now as for the rest of the lighting, we just used the two GMV panels, set those to a blue hue, and just pointed those towards the, the walls and the ceiling. So to spill and fill the space with just this dark blue hue. Again, we want 
moody looks, intimate dark color and tonality. Um, and so that's how we kind of set that up. No key light in there. You know, I really wanted to, to go off of the backlight alone in this. You can take something from so simple and basic and boring to instantly making it captivating uh, just by using backlight. Um, it's one of the most common techniques with lighting you will see, especially in the film industry. Go watch some films. The next look at his place, this was kind of just a filler. You know, we wanted to get something else that was a bit different, a bit unique. Um, and for this shot specifically, I had no idea how we were really going to use it or implement it into the video. I just, I knew it was something that I'd been really wanting to try and, and test out and, and see if I could use. And, and I think overall, I knew that it was going to match, again, the, the mood and intensity of this video. High energy, sporadic, fast, ambitious, moody, uh, confusing. Um, and, and so, you know, again, with your scene uh, with the B-roll, what is this? What the hell is going on? You know, I can't really tell you. Essentially, the setup we use is we set two light stands on the side. Um, we got just a giant sheet of plastic from Home Depot, layered um, essentially like two layers. So we have like a strong set of diffusion in front. Attach that to the light streak, uh, excuse me, the light stand. So it's just a nice firm line of this plastic. And then we blasted from behind with the Forza 200 and a red gel on top of it uh, to create this beautiful, strong, harsh red light look, um, but also a silhouetted look. So again, backlighting, creating just a really captivating, ominous, um, an interesting image. After that, we bounced out of there and we headed to our last location, which was an open field. And for this location, we had set in mind um, to really just make this a cool isolation shot. So it's just Shawnee in this giant open field, isolated. Um, and the concept as well was to have a barrel, a burning barrel. So to have a big barrel and just be like burning it. Um, with a bunch of stuff. So the idea originally was to, he'd be like throwing in papers, you know, like love letters, photos, all these different moments and memories uh, of him and his love life, his relationship. However, all the locations we talked to, all the scouts we did, we could not get any permission um, to do fire, uh, especially in a barrel, unfortunately. So what we did instead is we took the barrel out there and we set it up and planned in mind to do the fire in post-production. So what we did is we brought him, brought the barrel out and shot the whole scene. Um, again, we didn't use any bounce, any additional light, just use the lighting as is. It was a beautiful sunset. Um, again, sunset behind him, again, utilizing backlights. I knew I wanted to create fire, emulating and simulating what that effect or what that would look like with your lights. So creating a lighting effect like a fire. Now, thankfully, I have these incredible things called Pavo Tubes, 6C2s from the one and only Nain Lights, um, incredible partners of mine. Love these guys, love the lights, love what they're doing in the industry right now. Highly recommend you check them out. Um, and so what we did is we set six Pavo Tubes inside this barrel and set them to uh, candle fire mode. So again, it's, it's kind of like this emulating and flickering orange light, right? So it, it again, it simulates what a fire would look like. So um, you're seeing this growing orange light um, inside the barrel and a bit on Shawnee when he's close to it and spreading outside. Now again, it was a little um, light out. We didn't have any huge sources we could bring out into this open field that could light up the field as well. So could have used that to maybe enhance the effect a bit more. However, overall, you know, I think we did a really, really good job, especially since, you know, the budget didn't meet the means to hire a video effects artist. I'm by no means a video effects artist. I'm a director and cinematographer. However, it, you know, I love doing video effects when I can. I love trying new things. So this was a, a great uh, trial and learning experience. Um, and now I'm committed to, to learning and, and implementing more video effects. So but that's really it, guys, in regards to the actual production side and lighting and everything. That's that's how we set up the lights, um, you know, in order to create that fire effect. And then in post, I used footage crate to gather my different fire looks and, and then, you know, a combination of Adobe and After Effects and a lot of roto brushing and keyframing um, in order to set these fires in these different scenes and moments and blend modes as well, adjusted with some blend modes. To, uh, pretty sure I set them all to screen. Um, and again, just doing these different and various techniques and, and things 
in order to make the fire look as realistic as possible to stay in the barrel. Um, again, like the roto brushing, had to do that in After Effects in order to make the fire look behind um, Shawnee, um, different things like that. Um, now, I know in the beginning, I definitely missed uh, touching on overall what gear we used. So again, we shot with my Ursa Mini Pro G2 lens-wise. We used a Tamron 24-70 f2.8, a Canon um, f2.8 16-35 USM um, Mark III. Uh, additionally, we used a Tamron 70-200 f2.8. Um, that was it lens-wise and, and camera-wise. That's all we used. Then uh, again, with lighting, we used Nainlight Pabo tubes. We used the Nainlight Forza 200. We used the Nainlight Forza 60B. Um, and then we also used the GMV LED panels. Um, that was the lighting, that was the lenses, the camera. Um, oh, and then stabilization wise, we used the, the tripod and then we did some shots with the glide cam, or you could essentially call it like a steady cam operation. It functions in the same way, it's not quite as stabilized as a steady cam but man is it a hell of a lot cheaper. Uh, so we use that rig and set up for some shots as well. And that's pretty much it guys. That's, you know, that's how we created this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed everything I had to say here, uh, all the BTS as well as the, the in-camera footage. Um, and I hope you learned some things here. If you have any questions or concerns, please drop them below. If you enjoyed the video, I would greatly appreciate a subscribe and a like. Um, you guys are helping pay the bills, and I very, very much appreciate each and every one of you. Each and every one of you. Um, so again, if you enjoy the content, if you want to see more, um, please hit that like, please hit that subscribe, drop a comment, um, send me to a friend. I would greatly, greatly appreciate the support. It means the absolute world to me. Um, and I just hope you have an absolutely amazing day. I love y'all. I'll see y'all in the next one. Kyle Loftus. And I'm signing out.